Welcome to the Life Handmade Podcast by Scrapbook.com. This is the show for paper crafters, and I'm your host, Stephanie Foster. On this episode, we are speaking remotely with the ambitious and skilled Simon Hurley. Simon is 18 years old and currently lives in Wisconsin. He discovered card making through YouTube and instantly fell in love. He has been in the crafting industry now for six years, and in Simon's own words, his journey took off after he filmed his first class with Scrapbook.com. And in the past couple of years, he's partnered with Ranger Inc., and we are excited to announce that he has just released his newest product line featuring new stamps, stencils, and tools. Links to those new products can be found in the show notes, but we are so excited to be speaking with him today, so welcome, Simon. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks so much for that intro, and uh, I'm so excited to be on the podcast today. Well, we are so excited to speak with you and we're speaking remotely today, but you've been out to our facility several times and we just love having you here um, when you come to visit and to film classes. So hopefully not too, too much longer till you can come back and visit again. Yeah, definitely. It's been so much fun always going out to you guys and filming and um, kind of growing up with Scrapper.com as you guys grew as well. That's exactly right. And you mentioned coming out to film. I think you were 14 at the time. Is that right? I think so. Either 14 or 13. It was it was really young. That is so awesome. So start even before then, like when did you first get into crafting? What crafts were you doing? Yeah, so I got into crafting at a very young age. Um, my mom was a teacher, so she kind of encouraged that creativity and would buy like project kits for us to work on. Um, and then I remember the first thing that I did was look on YouTube and found like a paper bead video. And so I was coloring like printer paper and started rolling those and making earrings and bracelets and stuff like that for my mom. And then it all kind of took off from there. Um, I made like paper origami sculptures with like little triangles of paper and made a bunch of animals. Um, I crocheted. And then finally, at around like 11 or 12, I found card making on YouTube and fell in love with the inks and paints and and really the fact that each card is so different that it keeps you interested. Oh, that's great. And was your mom into the crafting and card making as well? Or is this just something you kind of started on your own? Yeah, um, she did some scrapbooking um, when we were really little. And then after having three kids kind of got, you know, too busy with it. So she had a little bit of scrapbooking supplies that I kind of took took a hold of um, once I started. But she wasn't really familiar with card making and that whole world. And it was definitely very different from everything else that she had done. So tell me a little bit about that when you first started watching these YouTube videos. Like, who were you watching or following? Like, how did you learn it? What did you start off doing? Yeah, definitely. I think I saw either a Jenna from McGuire or Christina Warner video first, and they are just so inspiring. Um, and then just kind of fell down like a rabbit hole of videos. Of course, seeing Tim Holtz and all of his inks and stuff like that um, was really inspiring to me as well. And then I remember I went with my grandma to um, a craft store and just purchased, you know, a bunch of different supplies. Um, they weren't the best. And then I kind of learned that, you know, shopping online and you can find a lot of different stuff. Like even at scrapwood.com, there are so many amazing brands that you guys sell and you can really find a lot of different stuff for your liking. That's wonderful. And so you then started, like how long after you started then doing your own videos on YouTube? Is that kind of where you started? Yeah, I started on Instagram. I think I started posting a couple of pictures and then like about halfway through the year of my first year of starting, then I decided to film my first YouTube video and it was very bad. It was poorly lit and uh, I actually recently did a video of me recreating the card and reacting to the video. Uh, oh, um, we're going to have to link that. That's great. Yeah, it's so much fun. So um, it's fun to look back on and see how much I've grown. But yeah, then I moved over to YouTube and just fell in love with that because you can really share more of a process and and share more of like personality and storytelling, I guess, kind of in the videos. Well, you, you have a quote on your website that says, my first videos were not great at all, but if I waited until they were perfect, I wouldn't have shared anything at all. Yes. And I love that quote. Tell me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, definitely. I just really encourage people to get started. Um, I know a lot of people will reach out to me and ask, you know, what camera is the best and and what's the best equipment. But I always recommend like, hey, just pull out your iPhone at first um, or pull out a camera that you have at home, no matter how good it is, and start filming yourself. And even with card making too, my cards were never great at the beginning. But like I said, if I had never started or taken that first step, I would still be here wanting to do it. So um, I always recommend that because you're always going to be able to grow and look back at what else you did and kind of see how much you've grown from it. Oh, absolutely. Such great advice because for sure, in in any aspect of our life, if we wait until it's perfect, it'll just never happen, right? We got to start somewhere. So I think that's how we found you was from your YouTube videos and you were 13 or 14 when we contacted you. What, how was that experience? What was that like? Yeah, that was crazy. Um, I remember Laura reached out to me and, and afterwards she told me that she found me from like a slime video that I had made because she was looking for like crafts for her kids, uh-huh. um, but then saw all the card making and, and then invited me out from that. And I wasn't really familiar with Scrapper.com at the time. Uh, like I said, I kind of grew with you guys. Um, and so we thought it was just crazy because I had like maybe 2000 followers at the time. And so we responded back and um, kind of the rest is history. You guys flew us out and we had so much fun filming the first class that we did. And it was kind of my first time demoing live like that with other people. And um, it was definitely a little nerve wracking, but I just love how it turned out. It turned out amazing. And I actually went back and look, we still have those classes online for free if anyone wants to take a look. But you were so well spoken and so professional. I can't believe that that was your age when you were were doing all of this and teaching great techniques, you know, things that people may not have known how to do. So that was so impressive. Yeah, thank you very much. It's always so funny because I always come back from one of those classes and I'm like, I don't know how well I did at that. Because even with like trade shows and stuff, you're speaking the whole day and sometimes you just don't even register what you're saying after a little while. So I was like really excited on how that turned out because I didn't think that it was as good as it was um, after we were done filming. Yeah, you've done a great job. So it wasn't always easy, like going through high school, doing what you did with your creative side. Um, it sounds like you experienced quite a bit of teasing, um, maybe even bullying from that, um, from those years. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. It wasn't, it wasn't the easiest to go through high school. I think um, for me, it was especially weird because I started it in eighth grade mm-hmm. um, and I went to a very small school at the time. And then moving into high school, it's weird because I think at that time I had like two or 3,000 followers. And it's weird because I'm over here sharing everything about my life online and sharing all of these videos. And it's not really a normal thing for a kid to be doing either. And so it was weird to go into high school with all these new people and know nobody. But then immediately if somebody, you know, meets me that day, they can look me up and see everything that I've been doing online. And so that was definitely a little bit weird as you're trying to make friends and know people. And I think the majority of the bullying and things like that were from people who didn't even really take the time to get to know me. Mm -hmm. It was more of just like looking online and, oh, that's funny what that kid does. So let's pick on him, but never really even talking to me too much, which is kind of weird. Absolutely. I'm sure they hadn't gotten to know you or they would have loved you, Simon. So <laughs> Thanks. yeah, what advice would you give to to teens who might be going through something similar? Because I, I know I have three teenagers in, you know, eighth, ninth and 12th grade now. Um, and, and it's hard. Those are hard years for them. And it's hard for them to see like past high school, like if you can get through it, you know, what's on the other side. But how did you personally deal with that? And what advice would you give to them? Yeah, totally. So I think I dealt with it as uh, less of like trying to avenge people or, you know, take it back out on other people. I always think hurt people hurt people. So, you know, they're they're probably hurting inside. And so instead of passing that on to somebody else and getting angry at that, I kind of took all my, you know, anger out on art and things like that. And kind of that's what my videos really were for me. It's just kind of an, a self-expression um, after that. And so to other people who are struggling with that, if you're a kid or you're an adult and and have a kid who's struggling, I think just looking ahead and knowing that once you leave high school, it's all not going to matter. So those popular kids who are picking on you, they're not going to be like super popular because everything outside of those walls is totally different. And so, um, yeah, just know that everything that's going on right now is going to end. It's all a chapter in your life. And um, 
you know, if you have a couple of close friends around you, that's really all you need um, is some close friends and family. And that really helps to get through those years. So true. And I, I'm sure they were just jealous of your success, Simon. You were doing so many fabulous things. And I'm sure that was hard for some people, like you said, who are already hurting. They can't be happy maybe for other people. So yeah, thank you. And and I think um, one other thing, too, that I wanted to mention is if, if you have something that you want to do, like I said, card making is kind of not a really normal thing for a bunch of kids to be doing. Um, but if you have something that's a little bit different, or you know that people are going to pick on you for, um, I think just really go for it, even if you don't share it with a bunch of people and really make it known to everybody that you're doing it. Um, because in the long run, like I said, once you leave those walls, it's not going to matter, you know, if you tried to fit in and you were the most popular kid, it's going to matter if you did what you loved, because in the end, you're going to be left with what you did. And so I think that's a big thing for me too, is, well, now I have a job because I continued doing what I was doing. Um, and I can just do this full time. So just stick to doing what you love and and don't always fall into what everybody else is doing around you or what's the coolest thing to do because I don't think that that's really a thing that's going to take you far in life after you leave. So true. And you followed your passion. And within those just few years of high school, look at how much you grew and how, you know, how far you've come along just in those past few years. So you really did use that time wisely. Um, I, d- I would love to go back to just your mom for a minute. She is definitely your biggest cheerleader and supporter. Were there any things that she did that maybe helped you through those years where where it was difficult? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think she was always by my side supporting me and everything that I did. She really helped with all of my videos and even reaching out to people and flying out to scrapwood.com and events and stuff like that with me. Um, I think she always had helped me and reminded me too that, you know, not everything is going to matter once you leave and, and, you know, this might hurt now and what people are saying might be awful now, but it's not going to really matter. Um, and I think also just ingraining that into me that, you know, it's, it's not because of you, it's because of what they're feeling. Um, and so, yeah, they've been huge support. My whole family has been an amazing support system through that whole thing too. That's wonderful. So just at the age of, was it 16 when you partnered with Ranger? Um, I think so. It was in 2019, at the beginning of 2019. Okay. So how did that come to be? I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you think that they saw in you? I mean, we see a lot in you, Simon, but what <laughs> did they see in you that they thought, oh, we need to, to partner with him and he's got some great things to offer? What, how did that come to be? Yeah, so I really wanted to start my own product line for that whole year um, of 2018. I was kind of looking around and um, shopping around the idea to a bunch of different companies because I knew I didn't really want to do it on my own. I wanted to still be able to create videos and stuff like that. Um, And so I had this idea for an ink and it's still not released on the market. We haven't quite figured out how to do it yet, but maybe maybe in the future, cross our fingers. Um, And so like spur of the moment, I reached out to Ranger. And I don't ever recommend doing that because you're not going to really get a ton of responses. And I didn't expect anything. Um, but the worst thing that they could say is no, or just leave me unopen, right? Because I had I had worked with them a couple of times. And so I thought maybe. Yeah. Um, and so they emailed me back and they were like, all right, let's hear this idea. So I sat down and made a video because that's, you know, my best way of presenting an idea. So we all watched the video in the meeting room. And at the end of it, they said, you know, we want to have you as a signature designer. So just kind of think of that, process it, and let us let us know what you think. And for me, it was insane. Um, I hadn't really dreamed of that <laughs> at all. So I thought it was super cool, really exciting. And the reason why I think they chose me, and they've kind of talked to me about it too, is because of that whole video thing, I could really convey an idea through a video. And, and also they were like, you know, you came to us with an idea. You you had an idea for a whole line and, and that really helps us. Um, and then they obviously really liked my presenting style and stuff like that. And of course, um, everything that you need to, to bring all that together. But it was really more, it was less of, me wanting my name on something and more of me just wanting a core line of products that I could stick to and always recommend to people. And so that's why I kind of did it is to just make sure that what I'm recommending is super high quality and kind of share that with the world. And so tell us about some of those products that you have helped to kind of design and, and have your name on it. 
Yeah, definitely. So I think the kind of core core of my line right now is my ink pads. And um, a lot of people on the market, there are so many ink pads. And so everybody thinks, you know, we don't really need another one of those. Um, and I remember introducing it was kind of difficult at the time because there had been so many that were coming out. Um, what's very different about Ranger is we sit down with our chemist that's in-house and um, we really formulate the idea from scratch. Um, we sit down and we talk about what I want in an ink, what's going to work best for me. And then he comes up with a couple ideas, a couple different formulations. And if it's not right from there, we keep going and, and keep working on it. And um, I wanted an ink that could blend watercolor and stamp really well. And, and a lot of people are like, well, some other inks can do that. But I wanted it to do it phenomenally on all three aspects. And I remember I was so picky, um, even right before Creativation, right before we were about to launch these inks into production, I was like, all right, we still need to change one more thing. I want them to blend better. Wow. <laughs> so we went back and they were like, all right, Simon, we can tell you're going to be difficult, but at least we know <laughs> it's going to be a super high quality product that you're going to use forever. And so we changed the formulation one last time and everybody now tells me that they blend so well. Um, oh. So I'm glad we did that. But that's one of the products. And then... Um, Wait, can I interrupt really quick? Yeah, totally. Because I have to talk about the names of your ink pads. I love them. Yes. Um, tell a few of those names, some of my favorite, like Prom Queen, Midnight Snack. Like, how do you come up with these? <laughs> we have so much fun. And like I said, my mom is really supportive. So she will sit down with me and come up with these names. Um, I'm really into storytelling and things like that. And um, really setting off a whole mood when you pull out these inks and create with them. So I didn't want like, you know, lime green or something really basic that just gives the color away. And I remember sitting down in a meeting with our product manager. Um, and I was like, what if the names don't really mean anything to the ink pads? Like, what if they're just kind of a little bit out there? And she was like, go for it. Have fun. Play. We want this line to be your personality. And so for me, we just sat down and had so much fun listening to music and, you know, reading different things and just pulling words from here and there. And, um, you know, some of them came to me in dreams Oh, neat! <laughs> um, and just a lot of different things. And we would like have a whole list of rejects before we found the right one. But once you once you have it, you just know that it's perfect for it. And yeah, Midnight Snack is one of my favorites. <laughs> um that was released recently, but that was about to be one of the um, first color names. What we decided it needed to be a, a little bit of a darker color, but I just love that one too. That's great. What are some of your other favorites? Um, I love the color Psych. Um, that one's one of my favorites because it's like this lime green yellow color and the name is just perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then my neutral colors, the brown and the gray, are named after my dogs. So we have Gur and Woof because my uh, one dog growls a ton and my other one barks a lot. And they're those colors. So I thought that would be perfect for them. So fun. What kind of dogs do you have? Um, they're cockapoos. So two cockapoos. Oh. Um, one is like brown and white and one is black and white. Cute. Okay, so that's so fun. And you, you people need to go and just scroll through the names of your ink pads because that's really fun. But what were some other products that you um, just thought, I want to create the best, you know, besides ink pads, what are some other things like that you just thought, these are on my list? Yeah, totally. I think for me, the designing of the stamps was really important. Um, there aren't always a lot of images that are more masculine or for guys out there. Um, besides, you know, like a wrench or a screwdriver. And I think that's just a little too serious sometimes. And so I went in and created the Dudes 2 stamp set, which really kind of set the whole tone for my line, I think, um, with a bunch of guys. And you can kind of dress them up to look like whoever it is in your life. And now we've continued that line and just like released sports stamp sets and a bunch of different things like that. So I think bringing that aspect to my line. And also there's a bunch of sets that work for both genders too. We didn't just do um, guy stamps, but I noticed that that was a big thing missing in our industry. Absolutely. Um, and so that was really awesome when we created that too. And just the fun and playful style of them too. I just think that's really awesome to make someone smile. Yeah, that that's how would you describe your style? I was going to say playful was one of the words you've got. They're this fun. If you've not seen them, they're just the drawings, yeah. the critters, the um, there's lots to it. Your Halloween collection. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's really fun, playful, whimsical, kind of quirky, too. Um, sometimes my dad's like, well, that's not how that looks in real life. And I'm like, it's not supposed to be real life. <laughs> this is this is just an animated kind of cartoon of real life. And then um, we did a couple other products, too. Like our cardstock is really um, like a, just a good basic necessity. But 
Um, it takes the inks really well. So it doesn't have any coating on the top of it. It's a really thick white cardstock and super bright white. And I've had a bunch of people just tell me how great it is for doing different water techniques and blending. And people love to color with their Copics on it and stuff like that too. So lots of different things you could do with that. And then one more thing with the stamps that I think is really special. Um, we've done stamps and background stamps and stencils so far. Um, and the background stamps, I had an idea for it last year um, where the background kind of peels out and then you can have a whole background if you want to, if you want to piece everything back together, or you can pull the images apart and use those separately. And I remember like not sleeping the night before that because I was like, oh my gosh, I hope people like this. <laughs> and it was like top selling. Um, and so we've kind of continued that because everybody just loves the idea that you get so much versatility in your background. You absolutely do. I remember seeing that at CHA and thinking, oh my gosh, this is just genius because yeah, like you said, you can use it in so many ways. Um, you know, peel apart stamps who, you know, it's just genius idea. So impressive. totally. Thank you. And, and, um, I, the idea came to me because I saw other stamp sets that were rubber, like my background stamps, and they had images cut out of it, but the rest was just a waste on a sheet. Um, and so I was like, well, what if we do that, but we make the whole thing a design? And they were like, well, we can we can try it. <laughs> um, and then they did. And it's just been so amazing to do that. And um, it's still at the same price as my other backgrounds, too. So you're not paying anymore, but you get just this really awesome um, way to peel apart your stamps. And it's almost like you get a stamp set with your background stamp, which is so cool. That's really neat. So what do you have kind of coming out if you're able to share that with us? What's kind of coming in the future that we can look forward to? Yeah, definitely. So at the time of filming this, um, it was my fall release. So we released a bunch of awesome fall stuff. We have peel apart background stamps that are leaves um, and a bunch of critters, like a trick or treat stamp set of all of the little animals so and people dressed up. It's so much fun. And then um, we released a basketball stamp set and gnomes. And I like to think of each set individually so that you get, it's a six by nine um, clear photopolymer stamp set. So you get a lot of images on there. So I find I do one theme per stamp set and kind of give you a whole variety of themes per release. Yeah, and they all and go together. Yeah, yeah super cute. Yeah, totally. It's all kind of the same like holiday and, and things like that that really work together. Um, and all I, I love saying too, that was a great point to like mix and match your stamp sets because they're all like the same size too. So you can really pull in different images and get a lot of variety to it. And then um, we were talking about when this is going to be released and it's going to kind of come in January. So um, then we are releasing a ton of fun stuff. We have this new tool coming. I'll be kind of vague, um, but it's going to bring a whole new life to your background stamps and stamp sets and stuff like that and your inks. And it's just going to be a great way to create backgrounds. Um, and then, of course, we have more stamps and stencils and design products. Um, and then, of course, probably more inks coming um, in 2021 as well. We are on the edge of our seats, Simon. We can't wait. Yes, there's just so much fun stuff. And I'm I'm sitting down designing a lot of it right now and just so much fun. And I have to wait. <laughs> I have to wait to use it all, but I'm so excited. I can't wait. And you, you kind of give some... Um, I saw a story on Instagram actually today. You kind of were talking a little bit about it. You can't say too much, but uh, definitely people can follow you on Instagram, YouTube, and and make sure that they find out when the latest releases are are dropping, right? Yeah, totally. I think this year we did every other month and we'll see um, how it is in 2021. We might up it um, or just keep our same schedule. So yeah, keep keep looking on Instagram and YouTube and you'll definitely know when we are releasing. That's so fun. Where do you get most of your inspiration? Is it like, again, you're seeing things that aren't available that you think some, we could use this? Or where do you get inspiration when you're, um, you know, creating the stamps or stencils? Totally. I think um, part of it comes from crafting already. So when you're sitting down so much with products and stuff like that, you kind of realize what's missing um, and what you could use and what could make things easier. So I think that's part of you know, where tools come into play and things like that and designs. Um, but then sometimes it'll come to me um, like when I'm about to go to bed and then I'll stay up the whole night just drawing it instead because when you have an idea, you gotta you yes. got to take it. So like the other night, I, I pulled an all-nighter um, drawing because I was so excited about this stamp set idea. Um, but then it also just kind of comes like you'll see different designs on a carpet or on a wall uh, and then you just kind of 
make it your own and take that idea and bring it to a whole new level in a stamp or a stencil. And it's always so much fun kind of getting inspiration from all over the place. That's great. Well, we went to our online community and asked them what some of their greatest crafting challenges or questions were. Um, And so I'd love to read one of them um, to you and then see what what advice you have for this person. Um, Her name was Carrie Q. And she said, "Um, I'm unable to afford Copic markers. Are there any markers that are comparable in quality, but more affordable? Do you have any advice for her? Yeah, um, I think a great tip is I know Copics can definitely be very expensive. And so I am not super into that kind of coloring. I love coloring with inks. But um, I've noticed that the Tonic Studios alcohol markers are awesome for blending. They don't have the brush tip that the Copics have. They have a, a bullet point and a chisel, which can kind of be really nice for getting into smaller details on your stamps too. Mm-hmm. Um, and they come in packs of three that blend together really nicely. And then you can kind of keep adding to your collection like that. And they're at a great price point for, for a pack of three markers. Great tip. Thank you. Another challenge that seemed to be a reoccurring one was just, um, like lack of time, you know, to find time for creating. And I want to know how do you, or how did you, especially with school, how did you balance everything? How do you balance, you know, running your business and doing your videos and, and having, you know, free time just to socialize with friends? How do you go about balancing it all? Yeah, totally. I mean, I always say you make time for the things you love, because especially when I was back in school, there was no time. Um, I really don't know how I did it. I kind of, like I said earlier, just kind of stayed up um, to to get everything done. I was never really a kid who was going to go to sleep without my homework done ever. (laughs) Um, And so I would always, you know, work on filming a video or work on designing a stamp set or meetings or whatever. And then I would film um, or sorry, get my homework done later at night. Um, And it was just kind of a crazy time. I would be answering emails during the day, but my school was really good about that, too. Yeah, so I would be like sitting in a study hall or sitting in a class and quickly like respond to somebody so they can keep working on whatever it was. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a crazy time. Um, even like, like I said, my school was really great. So they let me go um, on these trips to Creativation or scrapbook.com. Um, but then it would just be like Creativation. It was like four or five days of just presenting nonstop. And I was so tired. And it was like, get on a plane, do your homework on the plane and Uh. go to school the next day. So it was just kind of a crazy time, but you always can find time for things that you love. I love that. What are, what are some things you do enjoy doing outside of the crafting world? If you have some free time and it's not creating or crafting, what do you like to do? Yeah, totally. Um, I think the majority of my life so far has been doing this, especially because of school and stuff like that. So all of my access time would be spent doing this. But um, I love hanging out with friends. I love um, listening to music. That's one of my favorite things, because I think music is such a storytelling kind of way. It's like an art in a whole different form. Mm -hmm. And so um, listening to songs and like kind of coming up with the meanings that they were meaning is really kind of just interesting to me. Um, and then watching YouTube videos is, has been a really big part of my life too, which is funny, but, um, that's kind of how my whole love for YouTube came to be. That's great. Well, you've already made a name for yourself at 18 years old. What are like your, your goals going forward? If you can see yourself, maybe a few years down the road, what would you like to be doing or accomplish? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I think design has always been something that I've loved. So definitely something in that. Um, I love even the business aspect of it and filming videos and stuff like that. So I don't know whether it's filming videos for other people or editing videos or um, even like branching out and designing clothing or home decor or things like that. I think that could be really cool to bring designs to a whole new scale Um, because I love working with color and, and design. So I think maybe that could be a cool way to kind of continue the line and keep it going in different avenues. So exciting. We can't wait to see what you come up with next. Um, we have a couple of questions we like to ask um, before we end our our podcast. And one of them is, what is the most meaningful handmade project that you've ever created? Do you have yeah. something in mind for that? Yeah, I think um, I just thought of it today. I remember this crocheted ball that I used to make when I was crocheting things. And my dog rips up every toy he gets. Um, And so I made this like huge ball. 
um, and gave it to him when I was like younger, like before I had even started card making. And it is still in perfect condition to this day. He like lays on it. He pretends like it's his little baby. So yeah, that's probably the most meaningful handmade gift I've given. (laughs) Even though it's just to a dog, he just treats it so well. And it's just so funny that that's like the one toy that he still has and hasn't ripped up. I love that. He Mm -hmm. just knew it was special, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Okay, Simon, we have one last request of you before we go. Um, We have started reading some of our podcast reviews that we've received, and we thought it might be really fun um, to have you read one of our reviews and give a shout out to, I believe the name is M. Heiderfit, who left it for us. Would you mind going ahead and reading that podcast review for us? Yes, definitely. Thanks for reviewing it. I'm Heider Fit. Um, she says, inspiring. Most crafters have stories behind why they craft that are personal and meaningful. It's such a privilege to listen to some of these inspirational creators talk about not only what they do, but why they do it. Best part, I can listen while I create in my own home, which I think is so awesome. Like even during this whole quarantine to have the podcast and and like she said, just hearing everybody's stories Um, behind music, but also behind everything that we create in the crafting industry. It always has a story or a meeting. And so it's always so cool to hear that. That's our favorite thing with this podcast is getting to know each one of you more personally and hearing your story. Um, You are so inspiring, Simon. I'm so glad that as you kind of have gone through these past few years, you've had some ups and downs, but that you stuck with what you love because it shows in your work how passionate you are about it and how talented you are. And we are just inspired by you. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been it's been a crazy couple of years. Um, I never thought that it would get this far, but it's so much fun. Yeah, I definitely love it. Oh, my goodness. And you're just beginning, which is even more exciting. So best of luck to you. Thank you for spending this time with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Stephanie. This was a lot of fun. We really appreciate Simon speaking with us today. It's so fun to get to know him better and to find out his story and how he got started. If you want to find his online classes at scrapbook.com, you can check them out where he he first got started when he was 13, 14 years old, and then some of his more recent classes as well. We also have his products that you can find. And if you want to know more about any of the items that we discussed today, visit our show notes at scrapbook.com slash podcast. You can also shop scrapbook.com where you can find over 40,000 unique items and is the number one online store for paper crafters. When you shop at scrapbook.com, you'll enjoy award-winning customer service, great prices, a huge selection of products, and super fast shipping. You'll also benefit from nearly 200,000 real product reviews from crafters like you. You'll find endless inspiration and meaningful connection in the scrapbook.com forum and gallery, and you can even take free online classes. Be sure to subscribe to the Life Handmade podcast in your favorite app and enjoy our other episodes. Please consider leaving a review for the podcast as it will help other crafters like you to find it, and we may just read yours on air as well. Happiness is life handmade. I dry doodles of eccentric faces.